What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Hicks Fishing. Like I said at the end of the last episode, the entirety of the episode got a little long, so we're going to split it into two. So on this one, we're going to finish how to install the Bigsby to the Vibe Gravity Rudder uh, in a small DIY project for a regular rudder, uh, as well as how they attach to this, and then we're going to finish our conversation on motorized kayaks, why do it, why not to do it. So let's get it. Now, the next thing we're going to do on this video is we're going to go over a couple things. I'm, here I've got two rudders. One of the things with Bixby is they make it very easy. Uh, they've got all kinds of different adapters for this motor, depending on the type of kayak that you have. Uh, I've got two rudders here. This is the Vibe Gravity Rudder. Now, this is made by Vibe, but it was made by Vibe for Bixby. It's actually also made, it fits Bonafide SS127 or any other kayak that has a rudder kit in the rear. I bought this specifically for installing this motor on the Seagulls. The reason is, and I'll show you as we do it, um, when you let it go, it's going to go down into the water like that with the motor at the bottom and it, it's going to lock in place so that it will it, so you can use the reverse without it kicking up this is the standard rudder that came with the seaghost when you buy a seaghost 110 or 130 they they come with a rudder now the yellow pin series comes rudder ready they don't come with this rudder this rudder only comes on the seaghost for these, Bixby also makes a template that is free. You can go find the rendering of it. As long as you print it on 8.5 by 11, it is a template. And I'm going to cut this out, and I'm going to make this for how to cut out this rudder in order to install the motor. It's kind of a DIY kit, but they even make the DIY easy. The reason that I want to do that is because the yellow pin 130T comes rudder ready. It has a space for a rudder. I already own the rudder, so why throw it away? Why not go ahead and cut it open, get it ready to install the motor, and then if I want to switch boats, it's a matter of four screws switching the motor to the other boat. The reason for the Vibe Gravity Rudder versus this rudder is, and I'm going to try to see if I can't find a way to DIY this. Um, this rudder comes like this. When you release it to go into the water, it's going to flip all the way around, right? Imagine the boat is here. When the motor is put in reverse, it's not locked, so it's going to kick straight up. And it's not going to let you use reverse. Now, can, does that matter to me? Not really. So I'm going to use the yellow fin basically for me and my wife because it's a tandem. Um, I'm also going to use it for, to be a large heavy hauler for things like crappie fishing. So, yeah, if I can't reverse, that's not going to kill me. I just need to get on the crappie and put the anchor down. I'm really going to use it to travel from spot to spot. I'm not really worried about reverse. So, that's the next piece. That's part two of this video is we're going to go ahead and take it off and we're going to install it. We're going to go ahead and install the motor on the um, five gravity rudder and get it ready because in the next video, we're going to do the walkthrough. And I want to have the motor on so I can really show you how the setup works, why it works, what works for me, so that you can start to get a feel for what works for you and what doesn't. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut this one so that it's ready to just have the motor installed, but we're gonna leave the motor on the other, on the other motor. All right, guys, we're back. Um, I went ahead and did some of the arts and crafts while we were on a break there. Um, I kind of noticed when I went to go get the phone, I'm gonna apologize. I didn't realize that the table wasn't in any of the shots in the beginning, uh, but that's part of the reason. I kind of suspected that might've been the case. And I apologize, I'm uh, getting a little bit better with the videography. Uh, 
that's part of the reason why I picked everything up and showed it to you, because I kind of suspected that might have been the case. Um, the other thing, while we were on a break, is uh, you had noticed we uh, have a tendency to save our bloopers on this channel. And I wanted to do the arts and crafts on this one so that you didn't necessarily see how I did it, because I may not necessarily have the best tools for the job. Uh, but don't worry, my wife came out and we got some blackmail um, bloopers. So we're still going to have bloopers from this episode. Um, but let's dive right into it. So to go back to this one, this was the um, rudder for the extra boat, right? You can take this rudder, you can buy a rudder for the big speed that's just like this from Amazon. I think they sell them. This is $100, I think, from um, the Vibe shop or from Vibe.com. You can get them on uh, Amazon without the Vibe logo. And I want to say they're like 50 bucks. So it's one stop, one shot, because you're going to cut it and you're going to drill into it. But it's one, you know, for 50 bucks, you can go ahead and get a rudder and you can kind of DIY it the way you want to DIY it. Um, so let me just show you what I did. It's the easiest DIY. That's why I like it. I went ahead and did the arts and crafts. Now you can attach this however you want, but this is the stencil. Um, the AutoCAD guy somewhere at Bigsby goes in and makes these. As long as you print on 8.5 by 11, it'll fit. You just make sure that um, you've got it where you want it. Set it on here. And you can either trace it out like I did with a permanent marker. Or you can, I've seen people glue them on and just do whatever. Again, I don't have the, the right tools for the job. So we might have used the permanent marker and some pig sharpie and just kind of figured it out. When you're done, it'll look like this. And this ain't great. Doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just needs to function. The most important thing is that you line up the four spots for your four screws. This right here is just so that the cord has a place to go. Uh, now, when I want to move this motor from one boat to the next, all I'm going to have to do is line this up, screw it in, and you're done. Well, imagine the boat's the other way, right? So line it up, put the screws in there, and you're done. Now it's on the boat. Now, for this one, like I said, I won't be able to do reverse because if I put it in reverse, it's just going to kick up out of the water. But I've got two motor-ready rudders, and this one already came in my boat. It was free. And all I had to do was print off a piece of paper and cut some stuff. So that's what I was doing on the break. That's rudder number two. We'll go ahead and review rudder number two, and we're done. Now, rudder number one. We're going to go ahead and permanently install this. So when I say the vibe gravity rudder is easy, it's these four, and I don't know if you can see it, it's these four screws right here. So all we're going to do is the exact same thing, but they've already made it for you. You take out the four screws, you put the motor on here, and you leave the motor on here, you're done. So we're going to go ahead, and I've got a drill, but I didn't feel the, didn't feel the need for, to use a drill for something this simple. Uh, I'll say that, but watch me screw this up. We're going to fast forward this. All right, and there we go. There it is. So now we've got the big speed installed. And this is how I plan to keep it. And I'll go over this in the next video when I do the full walkthrough. I'll gloss over it. Um, I actually had the guys at Bob when they reinstalled uh, everything for this rudder. I added some lanyards here. And then, well, I added these hooks. You can see that. I added these hooks. And then I've got some lanyards that I'll show you that are on the the, the foot pedals for the steering so that I can unhook this whole assembly every time I transport it so I don't have this $600 piece of equipment just hanging off the edge of the truck as it's being transported. Um, but that's how easy it is. So, one of the lessons learned here, and you may have noticed in the fast forward there, um, the four bolts that you get originally that go in this, Do not fit the Bigsby, so you have to use the, you need to make sure that you're using the, the bolts that come with 
the big speed rotor itself, not the bolts that are already on the vibe gravity rotor system. The vibe gravity rotor bolt bolts are only made to keep this piece on it. If that makes any sense. So there's the install DIY rotor project. Easy to install motor on the kayak. And the motor will actually sit in the kayak as easy as one and then clipping it to it. Done. So to circle back. Why motorize your kayak? Motorized kayaks. Uh, motorized kayaks, number one, are becoming more and more popular. Um, I want to say, and I got this from a buddy of mine. I've only been doing this two years, and he's been doing it for 10. There was a point four or five years ago where people were trying to use trolling motors for boats on kayaks, and it was too big and bulky. But now, with new technologies, you're able to motorize your kayak, uh, be more competitive, do what you want to do, and you're still. I spent 900 bucks on this, 1200 on that. I mean, do the math here, 2100 A boat is still going to be 10000 for a used, 05 if you're lucky. So, it's still a trade-off for even a motorized kayak at this point. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, uh, and the whole point of this channel, right, is to kind of give you guys ideas on what you want to do, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, but also talk about your budget. Don't shy away from money. Because um, these things are going to cost money. At the end of the day, it's going to cost you a lot less than a boat, right? But it's still going to cost you money. And, and part of the thing with the last one on tackle storage is how you can easily nickel and dime yourself uh, by buying this, by buying that, by buying this, by buying the next thing you know, you spend $250 over the course of a year and a half. So you don't notice it, but you look in your garage and you're like, there's a bunch of money sitting there that I'm not using. Um, with a motorized kayak, a lot of people hear the, the dog values and they freak out. I did too at first. I was like, I'll never do this. It's crazy. One of the things that I will never say is I will never tell anyone, and this is just my financial sense, me and my wife's financial sense, I will never tell anyone to finance a kayak or anything um, that has to do with um, motorized sports. If you're going to finance a boat, fine, but you need to finance a boat that you know you can pay off in a year. Right? If your car is supposed to be three years, your boat ought to be a year. A, a kayak should never be financed. However, one of the things I've noticed with a lot of these manufacturers, now I'll, I'll throw this out there about that I really liked about Bigsby. I bought mine. I bought mine outright. But Bigsby has a deal through a firm where you can do 0%. So you're financing, but you're not financing. It's 0%. You're just splitting up a $1,200 payment. And it's split up into like six weeks. So you can split it up. It's still going to hit each paycheck, um, but as opposed to you dropping 1200 you dropping three or four each time. Um, there's another good website, and I will mention them a million times. It's called EcoFish, and I'll link them below. They have the same thing, but I want to say it's three or four months, so you're only making a monthly payment. And EcoFish is great. We can go into this later. When we get into the kayak conversation on which ones you want to buy and why, and if you get in, really get into it, and you're about to buy a Hobie, or you're about to buy an Old Town. Now, they don't have Hobies, I don't think, uh, but they do have Old Towns. And they have an old, you can get an Old Town Auto Pilot, which is a $4,000 kayak with a 45 pound thrust Minn Kota built into it, and you can get it with 0% financing for a year. So if you've already saved up half of that, you can go ahead and get your kayak and make payments off of it versus pulling money out of your savings and trying to transfer it back. Just things to think about when you're talking about your toys and your passion, because this stuff costs money, but it doesn't necessarily have to break your bank, especially for those of you who are watching this and have kids and so on and so forth. So you, it's not one of those things where you have to spend $1,200 right now. Um, so again, going back to the finance piece, don't finance, but if it's zero and you know you can make that payment, you're not really financing, you're just splitting it up. Um, so. To recap, why motorize your kayak? That's the last point I forgot to make. Why motorize your kayak? Uh, a lot of people like to motorize kayak, one, because it's convenient. Uh, it's very peaceful to be on this. I'm by myself, um, and I'll show you I've got everything I need. One of the things about me being in the Army, 
and I would dare say me and my first sergeant when I was a company commander are still friends, right? But he, he, and I don't think he meant anything when he said this to me in the field one time. I don't think he meant it to be like a prophecy or, you know, good advice. But he just kind of looked at me one time and, and I was like, why do you have all this stuff? Like, I'm over here with the bare minimum trying to be all hula and the stuff, other than my boots, like the stuff the Army gave us, right? And he just looked at me and said, sir, I've been doing this a long time. I am not going to be uncomfortable voluntarily. And that's just something I've kind of taken forward, um, taken forward in the field when I'm not around soldiers, if I'm in a staff capacity. But also, when I get on the water, I've got a $30 Bluetooth speaker in here. I can listen to my music. I've got everything I need. I've got, I'm, I'm ordering a GoPro so that we can take you guys with me so you can see what's going on. I've got a motor now so I can putz around and I don't even have to paddle. I literally have every little trinket. And we'll show you that when we do the walkthrough to make my life not only as convenient as possible while I'm on the water, but enjoyable. Extra cup holders, the whole nine. So, you know, one of the reasons to motorize for a lot of people is that convenience. Now, I'm going to say a couple more things about motorizing that a lot of people don't think about. I mentioned earlier I have some health things going on. If you're doing, forget my health things, motorizing your kayak is also a safety factor. Um, at Lake Altoona or Lake Lanier or Lake Hartwell or Kissimmee or any, of the other, any other normal lake pond chain interior that doesn't have water flow, it is helpful in case you get tired, but you're not in a free-flowing river. If you're in a free-flowing river, and my best example of this is when I go visit a buddy of mine at Tybee, the current at Tybee is insane. The Vibe Seaghost 110 is a great example of what to use at Tybee. This is actually one of the most affordable. The 130 is, is a much better example. One of the most affordable boats that you can paddle in open water current, meaning you can take it big water, go out in the ocean. However, if you get out in big water off Tybee, when the current's going out, if you're tired, you only have your paddle. And you are not fighting that current with your paddle. And now you're in a dangerous situation where you were trying to go from Little Tybee Island back to Tybee Beach to the mainland, and you're getting swept away much faster than you can paddle in. In a safety situation like that for people who salt water, this product right here plus your paddle can get you up to six miles an hour and you can use this to boost yourself with your regular paddle and get yourself back. Um, I've also seen guys, guys who really, guys and girls who go offshore fishing, like particularly folks who have the nicer Hobies, will put a Bixby or a Torquedo on the back of their kayak and they'll still use their pedal drive so that they can get in against current if they get in a bad situation quickly. So, Motorizing your kayak is not just a fancy, expensive, convenient thing. For me, it was, de it was definitely started as one of those. But with my current health conditions, um, it obviously sped the process up as a safety factor. For a lot of people who don't even have health conditions, that's a safety factor. Having that is a huge, makes a huge difference, whether it's the big speed or a torpedo or anything else. Um, just being able to in a bad situation, get yourself back to the boat ramp. Particularly if you don't have food, don't have water, you know, sometimes you're not planning on going on a camping trip, you're just going on a bait fishing trip, and the next thing you know, you need to get back and you're in a bad situation. These things are not as easy and forgiving as boats when you're out in big water by yourself. Uh, but we'll go into safety in a whole other video in depth. But these things do have a, I wanted to reiterate rehash, it's more than just a convenient fact, convenience factor, um, there's also a huge safety factor with owning a, a motor behind your kayak. So, we talked about why motorize a kayak. We talked about the three brands that you can go to, which will be linked below, um, to find a pre-assembled motorized kit. We talked about DIY, which I'll find you some ideas to get you started. Uh, we talked about cost. We talked about how you can afford it. If it's something you really want, but it's not necessarily something you can spend the money on right now, um, and then we went through this product in particular, why I like it, why I chose it. Um, and then we went through some, some different ways to, to, to mount it and why, why I choose it, why I mount it, why, why it works, why it doesn't work. Um, 
So like I said, guys, um, whether or not the motor, motorizing a kayak is up to you. Whether or not there's three different ways to use it, you can still use your paddle, and we can go over pedal drives later. I just don't have one. To me, I really like the motor. So until next time, rewind. First off, we've gone through all this. If you watched this whole video and haven't clicked the subscribe button, go click the subscribe button. Um, trying to get to 100 people by the end of the week. No, I'm kidding. That's probably not going to happen. I'm not crazy. But if, if you appreciate the content and you're actually watching this, getting something out of it, just click the subscribe button so you get an update every time we do a new video. And like I said, uh, next time we'll do a full walkthrough of my Seagull so you can really get a feel for how I fish, what works, what doesn't work, how all of this stuff comes together in a kayak format. Um, and we'll keep the series going from there. So until next time.